Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through word break. This is a very classic lead code or interview problem. Let's take a look at the problem first. We're given a dictionary of words. For example, we're given this dictionary which has two words, lead and code. And then we are given another string. It's just a lead code. And then it's asking us whether it's possible that we can use the words in the dictionary regardless how many times that we can use them. Is it possible that we can form such a string? That's the problem. There are multiple ways to do this. You can either use breadth first search or brute force, which will result in time limit exceeded error in lead code. Or you can use dynamic programming, which is tagged in this program called dynamic programming. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can use dynamic programming to solve this problem. So we'll just use the given example to help us understand how we can use dynamic programming to solve. The given string is lead code and the given dictionary is lead and code. When we talk about dynamic pro programming, we always most likely we associate we will use something extra to help us store the temporary states to save us the redundant repetitive calculation, basically serving as a cache. In in this case, we'll use a Boolean array, which is of the size of the length of the given string plus one. Why plus one? That is because we need to calculate every single substring of this given string from zero all the way up to the last one. In a lot of languages, for example, in the language that I chose, which is Java, the substring API call, the beginning index is inclusive and the ending index is exclusive. So we need to have the last one to be one more plus the length of the string. Here here is the index. Uh, there are a total of eight characters in this given string. We start from zero all the way to seven and plus one, which is eight. And then we'll initialize an array, a 1D array, a Boolean array. F just stands for false, which is the default value when we initialize a Boolean array. And you see here, we have this Boolean array not exactly matching everything to the character position in this string. That is because the very first one, what this false means is just an empty character. So an empty character will be true. Here is the index for the Boolean array. What this Boolean array really stands for is this is the key to understand this dynamic programming problem. For the substring from a position to the position ending in say ending in one, ending in index one, it's possible to break this string up to this position into a valid word that is included in the dictionary. That is what it means. So in the beginning, we will have this empty string to be initialized to be true because empty string is always included in any dictionary even if the dictionary is empty that's totally fine so because this is empty and why do we need this we'll talk about that in just a second before we start the program how it's going to run it, we will have two pointers i and j which is going to help us calculate to go through every single possible substring that could be a valid word in the dictionary so we'll use two pointers one is beginning index the other is ending index so the algorithm is that we'll try to break this given string down down into two smaller words that I included in the dictionary. That's the idea. How we're going to iterate through this, we'll use one pointer, you can call it slow or fast pointer, or it's basically left and right pointer, or beginning or ending index. I will continue to move. Whenever we find there is a substring in this given string that is a valid word in the dictionary, we will mark the ending index of that word to be true in the DP array. That just means up to that character, we can break that down. And then from that moment, then we'll just move on. We can just continue to check the rest of this string, whether it can be broken down. Now let's just get started. Then you'll see what that really means. So first I will increment. Ji, this substring is L. Do we have L in the dictionary? No, continue. Le, do we have Le? No, we don't. Lee, -E. no, we still don't. I increments again, lead. Now we do have this lead in the dictionary. What are we going to do at this point is we'll mark this position, which is I is at four's position. So we'll mark the index at four in the DP array to be true. Again, okay? what this means is up to this point at position four, which is zero to four. Again, the end index is exclusive. So that means L-E-E-T, these first four characters. We have a valid word in the dictionary. So it's safe, we can mark this one to be true. This is what this DP array means. And the reason we need this DP array is to help us save this temporary state so that we know we did this map. We did one by one so that we don't need to run through this again. That's the beauty of having an extra cache. Okay, at this point, we'll continue to increment I. I lead C. No, we don't have such a word in the dictionary. Continue. And then at this point, we'll increment J to see if it's possible that we can form a word starting from a different J, but ending but still 
any in i that we can find a possible word in the dictionary and in this route the first thing we're going to check which is whether this ending index of the previous one is a valid word or not if it's not then we don't even need to check this part right so in this case dpj is false j is one one is false so which means we don't have l in this valid dictionary right so we don't even need to check eetc then we continue to increment j j is here do we have le le in j is two two is here two is still false which means le is not a valid word okay then we continue now j is three three is still false it's true because le -E is not a valid word in the dictionary and then we continue to increment j in this case j is four four is true in this case which means we do have a word lead in the valid in the dictionary right so at this point we want to check whether c this is the word j i the substring of j i which is c is c a valid word we have in a dictionary no it's not so we'll continue to increment i in this case so now we have lead co we continue to do this we'll increment j all the way up to this point we know lead is in the word but neither c o or o is a valid word in the dictionary right and then we'll continue to increment i in that case what we have is we'll continue to do all of that we found j at this position we have lead is the correct word but neither do c or co or cod is a valid word then we continue to increment i now it is lead code the entire word but we don't have lead code as a valid word in the dictionary then we'll increment j in this case so j oh we don't have l we don't have l e and then we don't have l e e we can just check whether j is pointing to three and three is false all right then we don't even need to compare t c o d e then we'll continue to increment j all right j in this case j becomes four four in dp array it is true which means all the way up to this point we do have a valid word to help us break this part down then what we can do is we only need to check this substring from j to i which is code and then we do have code in the dictionary so in this case what are we going to do we'll continue to mark i which is eight to be in the dp array to be true so this one is marked to be true then that marks the end of this dp algorithm which is to return true we always return the last element which is the ending result we can quickly put this into the actual code let's take a look how that goes all right first we'll have we'll use a variable called n to indicate the length of the array which we'll use pretty often and then we'll initialize a boolean dp array as i said we'll initialize the first one to be true by default every single element in the dp array is false so at this point we'll initialize the very first one to be true that is because the empty array is always true is always included in the in any word dictionary and then we'll have two pointers smaller than or equal to n and then i plus plus then the second um, pointer will start from we can start from zero but it's it needs to be smaller than i so that we always have at least one character in the string in the substring that we're checking and then what we want to check is first we want to check whether j is true right if j is not true we don't even need to check from all the way from j to i right because that means we don't have a valid word to for the first part so that's why we check dj i first and also this is why we need to initialize the very first one to be true substring so that the first character is starting from j all the way up to i so that we can check this one this means starting from the very first character whether we want to check is whether this dictionary contains this word if it contains that means it's a valid word in the dictionary and then at this point what we can just change this one ending in this position to be true and we can simply break at this point which means we find a valid word in the dictionary that can help us break down all the way up to i's position so in the end we'll just return dpn 
So we initialize the array, the DP array length to be the length of the stream plus one. So in the end, we'll just return the last element in the DP array. Now let's hit submit and see. All right, accepted. It's not super fast. Couple quick op optimizations that we can do. The first optimization that we can do is we want to check, we can get the max length of all of the words in the dictionary. We can check the difference between J and I if the difference is already greater than the max length of the word in the dictionary. We can simply break out, right? That's the first optimization that we can do. Let's quickly implement that, which is, uh, I'll call it max length. Let's get that string word word list max len max 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 len word length. This is the max length. So what we can check is if I minus J is greater than max len we can just continue this is the first optimization that we can do let's hit submit and see how much improvement that we can oh word dict all right word dict that's the typo now let's hit submit again all right you see it's significantly improved um i don't know how much but based on what we can tell from seven from seven milliseconds to two milliseconds and now it's beating over 90% of the submissions. So let's hit some submit again and see. Yeah, it's pretty consistent. All right, this is the number one optimization that we can do. Number two optimization is that we can actually start from the end. For the second pointer, we don't need to start from the very left end. We can start from the right end so that it can save us quite some time. So let's see. For J, instead of starting from, from zero, we can start it from I minus one. And as long as J is greater than greater than or equal to zero, J will keep going down. All right, that's it. Let's hit submit again. Boom, it's even faster, 99%, which is really amazing. Um, these are the two optimizations that we can do. Yeah, I just submitted again, it's pretty consistent as well. Uh, maybe it's due to the, the test cases for this problem. Looks like these two optimizations could drastically improve the performance. That's about this problem. I'm trying to get better at explaining these dynamic programming problems, which is not super straightforward to think through and to go through. So please, uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave me down in the comment section below. I'm trying to, I'm definitely improving on this. That's it for today's video. If you find this useful, helpful, interesting, please just hit that like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate it. Please also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll continue to have a lot of interesting coding algorithm, Amazon Web Services uh, problems to be published on my channel. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.